Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Roster Battle, Florida State, Clemson. The Clemson and Florida State listeners who've been rocking with the fellas the last couple of weeks and months, you guys know exactly how this is structured going position group by position group, stacking these two teams up. And Dill, you look at Florida State, Clemson, the two front dogs in terms of odds to win the ACC, the two teams that I mean, largely the ACC has been going through the last couple of years. I'm fired up for this matchup October 5th. I already have a circle on my calendar right now. Just going to get a feel for how these two programs stack up against one another. Before we get into it, as always, just want to give massive shout out to both the Florida State and Clemson fans. Dill, you're rocking both of the banners in the background. We say it. We get the banners of the teams and the listeners that support the boys. Florida State, Clemson. Two of the teams that are at top of the list. We can't thank you guys enough for rocking with it. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, in the beauty of the roster battle episodes, let it fly in the comment section. There are a lot of conversations that could go either way. If you guys agree with us, disagree with us, let it fly in the comment section. Mix it up with the opposing fan base. That is the beauty of college football. And Dill, without further ado, let's get into this one. Let's start, as always. At the quarterback spot, two former five stars coming out of high school. Obviously, DJU previously playing for Clemson. K. Klubnik, DJU, who you taking heading into 2024? I mean, just given, I think, how much better I thought DJU's last year was at Oregon State than probably what we've seen from Cade Klubnik yet, I'm I'm leaning DJU. And I the obvious caveat for Cade Klubnik's whole career, and I think he's taken a bit of a beating for the start it's gotten off to, but you obviously kind of got to factor in again how how much like lack of health there was in that wide receiver room throughout the summer, throughout the season as well. Having a new offensive coordinator, not having practice time with some of those weapons he had. There's a lot of reason, I think, to think Cade Klubnik makes that step and is a little bit more consistent because you've certainly seen the flashes and he's a good athlete and all that. I just think DJU, you saw how much how big of a step he took at Oregon State, how good Mike Norvell has been developing quarterbacks, what he did with Jordan, Jordan. Travis, really impressive. So I think you got to go DJ, you know. Yeah, sitting here early, June, you have to go DJ. I don't think a lot of Clemson fans are necessarily going to argue that either. I think what's exciting for both fan bases is that you look at Florida State, DJU, the magic that Mike Norvell and this offensive coaching staff have been able to manufacture in terms of developing quarterbacks. You mentioned Jordan Travis. There's reason to believe DJU takes a massive step in 2024. You look at Kay Klubnik, I mean, going into year two as a starter, having his wide receivers actually be healthy for a spring camp, going year two with the offensive coordinator. I mean, Kay Klubnik's a guy that he was a former five-star for a reason, big-time arm talent, phenomenal athlete. He's a box checker. Now, I think the question is, can he put it together? You got to go DJU right now, but for both of these programs, like, I think both fan bases are looking at the quarterback spot and saying, hey, we are expecting to see a jump heading into 2024. Let's go to what I think is personally the most interesting conversation to have, and that is how do these two wide receiver rooms stack up? Now, Dill, I'm going to let you go first because I want you to take the heat in the comment section, but I'm going to kind of lay the groundwork out here. I think these both these wide receiver rooms are tremendously talented heading into 2024. Both of these wide receiver rooms don't have a ton of returning production or not necessarily a ton of guys that have done it multiple years at the power five level. And so you got two talented wide receiver rooms that are not necessarily the most proven wide receiver rooms. Who are you taking Florida state Clemson here? My lean is Florida state. And I think that's a cop out. I think the simple answer is I think Lake Benson is the best wide receiver on the field when they step out there. And then you kind of filter it back down. They both have talented team players, Adam Randall being one, the freshman being a couple of or, or the additional ones for the Clemson team. But I just think Malik Benson on the outside, I really trust what he can do. I think you can find enough guys. Ja'Kai Douglas, really like him out of the slot. I think if Hakeem Williams, Kentron Portier, one of those guys steps up to be that kind of third guy, you're looking at a pretty good Florida State room. And to me, it's about Clemson's inability to find that guy to really excel on the boundary. And it's been a couple of years now. I think we've been waiting for it, been calling for it. I'm sure the Clemson fans are kind of thinking the same. When's our next Sammy Watkins or DeAndre Hopkins? They haven't quite had it yet. Again, there's a lot of candidates for it, Adam Randall being one, the two young guys being the other two in my mind who can do it. But given that, I just think I have more confidence right now in Florida State's room. Clemson. Uh, I 
And the Florida State fans know I'm extremely high on the Florida State wide receiver room. Unfortunately, one of my favorite wide receivers, Destin Hill, going down with the injury. And I'm not necessarily saying that's the deciding factor. I look at this Clemson wide receiver room, and I mean, there's a couple of guys that have really shown they can do it at the Power Five level, right? And Tony Williams is a true freshman was one of the better wide receivers in the ACC. Struggled with injuries in 2023. Then you look at Tyler Brown as a true freshman in 2023. Showed to be one of the better wide receivers in the ACC as well. Antonio Williams, Tyler Brown, Adam Randall is a guy that that's kind of the guy that you're looking for to say, hey, can you break out, make it happen? TJ Moore coming from the state of Florida as a true freshman. Brian Wesco. I think both of these rooms are super talented. I'm going to lean Clemson because I think they have a few guys that have really shown they can do it, and I'm going to cheat for a second and say I'm going to lump in the tight end room as well. Give me Jake Bringensool as that tight end. Who I think he could be one of the best players in there, one of the best tight ends in the country in 2024. Give me Clemson. I would love to hear from both Florida State and Clemson fans on that conversation. Let's go to the running back room. I'll go first and take the heat a little bit. The Clemson fans know I like Phil Moffa a lot. You look at Florida State's running back room, and not only is Roy Dell Williams, though you were saying this before we went live, one of the better and most underappreciated running backs heading into 2024, but then you start looking at the depth in that room, and that's really what separates these two running back rooms apart. You look at Florida State, they got six guys that I really think can tote the rock in a big-time way, but most importantly, it's super diverse, right? A guy like Roy Dell Williams, Holmes or Cam Davis as a true freshman, kind of your all-purpose backs. And then you sprinkling guys like Lawrence to a Philly and Jalen Lucas, who apparently just took Florida State by storm in the spring practice session. So many weapons in that running back room that can do so many different things. It's deeper. I think it has some more guys that are a little bit more versatile. Give me Florida State in the running back room. And I kind of agree, and I'd echo you. I think that that gap between Phil Moff and Roydell Williams, I really don't think is as big as you probably think. Yeah. yeah you kind of, Roydell Williams and his kind of limited snaps, if you will, for Alabama, runs the ball hard. I like what he can do. And I think you're right. When you add that second, third guy into the mix for Florida State and what those guys can frankly bring to that passing game and some of the other parts of Mike Norvell's offense, I think just as a room, again, Phil Moff, I just don't think is quite good enough to just dominate a whole room. I'm going to put you under some pressure here. And I would echo that Jalen Lucas is a guy that with Mike Norvell getting all in his bag, I think could have a massive year. Who are you taking? Phil Maffa, Royda Williams. I go Phil Maffa. I, st- I, I think, still so think Phil Maffa is the best fighter or running back step on the field. Just been a little bit more proven, frankly. He's gotten more shots, really yeah. runs the ball physically, obviously. But again, I think it's really, really tight. It's just not obvious. It was obvious. I'd lean Clemson. It's not obvious, and I think obviously the depth and some of the other skill sets in the Florida State room kind of win the day. Let's go to the offensive line here. A really interesting conversation again. I, there is reason to believe that this Clemson offensive line could be really damn good. I look at Florida State and say a couple things that make me lean Florida State. One, I think it's a deeper unit. You saw Clemson struggle with some depth at times last year. Now, you look at this starting five and say, all right, I believe in what this starting five could be. I think they got a couple NFL caliber offensive linemen on Clemson's offensive line, but I look at Florida State and say, Darius Washington has done it at a high level at multiple positions. You look at a guy like Richie Leonard IV coming over from Florida, a guy that has played really good football in the SEC, Jeremiah Bowers flashing that time, Maurice Smith. uh, I think it's deeper, but I think more importantly, you've seen a steady – kind of rise in terms of the play on the offensive line. They return a ton of production. Give me Florida State, but I think this one is pretty damn close as well. And I think, frankly, you could make a case that both teams started to play their best football at the end of the year, frankly. And Florida State obviously got a little bit more healthy, but you kind of go to that Notre Dame game for Clemson. I mean, that's a really good performance. I thought once guys like Colin Sadler and Harris Sewell started to work into that lineup I thought that unit started to get really good I like the frankly versatility that Sadler gives them because they you're right the depth is obviously the question mark I think Clemson or Dabo even said that he was trying to address that in the portal obviously not going to be one of those coaches who goes out there and really yeah really gives it his all if you in the portal so that didn't happen but Colin Sadler's got a lot of versatility can play a couple different positions and those younger guys as they came on I thought this Clemson offensive line really started to play good and for me, I just don't think you've seen enough 
moments of dominance from this Florida yeah, State. Yeah, inconsistent. Offense. I think both both. Or wait, did you go with Clemson or Florida State? Just so we're keeping the tr- Clemson. I, Clemson, I think, has had moments where I'd say, "Ooh, that was dominant." Like what they did, for yeah. Notre Dame, very very impressive. I don't think you ever saw a Florida State performance and think that was their like their offensive line killed it. One like, thing were- that really works in Clemson's favor is like all these guys have played a lot of football together the last three years. Like they're going into year three having played a ton of snaps, and that's something that I'm kind of interested to see really mean something on the offensive line because. You don't see a lot of programs have that much continuity over multiple seasons because a lot of them use the portal. That's going to be really close. I lean Florida State because of the depth. Let's go to the defensive side of the football. Another very close one, if you will, on the defensive line. I'll start here. I'm going to go Clemson. I Peter Woods, TJ Parker. And then you take a look at the guys who aren't necessarily the stars but played phenomenal football. DeMonte Capart, Kate Diedendorf played really well in the spring game. Trey Williams, I – I think this Clemson defensive line, although loses some talent to the NFL, has some serious NFL talent that's still on this program. But most importantly, it is really deep at multiple different positions. Give me the Clemson Tigers here. Yeah, and I think, again, kind of on the edge to me, I think it's really, really tight. You both yeah. have a couple guys who are like, well, these are no doubt pros. They'll be high round picks. But I just think in the middle, I just give a pretty good size edge to Clemson. I think you just see how deep they are. Peter Woods, Capehart, Peyton Page. I mean, Again, a lot of guys who have been really seasoned through this program. You have your two young guys, obviously, T.J. Parker and Peter Woods, but a lot of guys who have gotten a little bit of seasoning are starting to – I mean, DeMonte Capehart I think is going to stun people. I think he's going to be a monster. So given that I think the interior for Clemson is just a kind of at a different level, I think I'll glean Clemson, but I think you're right. Florida State, I mean, their edge play is going to be unbelievable. And if they get that development like they did with some of those transfers – in, in some of their guys who are working through their system like they did last year, where guys played really good football for them, they might be better than I'm giving them credit for. Frankly. You look at both edge rusher positions, and I don't think it's crazy that we get through the middle of October and say Clemson, Florida State, some of the best edge rushing units that we see with Peter Woods kicking out the edge. TJ Parker, Peter Woods, that's certainly up there. Then you look at Patrick Payton, one of the best pure pass rushers in the country, Marvin Jones Jr. sounds like he's going to be a dog. And then the Florida State fans know I love me some Sione Lalea. Uh, two really, really impressive edge rushing groups. Let's go to the linebacker spot. This one is probably the most obvious answer, I would think. And I think Florida State fans would probably agree. You got to go Clemson. I think Clemson has one of the best pure linebacker rooms in the country. When you start talking about Barry Carter, our true freshman Sammy Brown, Wade Woodes. I mean, those are, in my opinion, all American caliber players. Then you look at Florida State. I like DJ Lundy. I think you have some massive question marks about who is going to be two, three, four linebackers. Uh, you got to go Clemson here. Yeah, I, not much to add. I think that's pretty obvious. Again, I, I don't mind Florida State's linebacker room. It's definitely not the strength of this football team. It'll be solid. It won't be a liability. But I look at Clemson, I think they'll be one of the better linebacker rooms in the country. So yeah, they go Clemson. <laughs> Going to the secondary, you got to go Florida State, though. I've been on record. I think Florida State might have the best secondary in the country, but that is certainly not a knock at what Clemson is going to be. Well, that's almost like the defensive line conversation, right? I don't dislike Florida State's defensive (laughs) line. I look at Clemson, they might be a top three, top five unit. Florida State, I like Clemson's secondary, but Florida State might be number one. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I think Florida State, you look at AZ Thomas, potentially the best cornerback or one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Then you look on the other side and say Fentrell Cypress, he's probably a top 10 cornerback in the country. And then you then get the Quindarius Jones who can really, really play too, I think. So you're just really loaded. You're deep. Right? It's a and then the nickel, I mean, Earl Little Jr. comes in from Alabama and I think just pushes Greedy Vance out of the program. And Greedy Vance was a damn good football player for Florida State last year. You look at the safeties. They got some young safeties that I am really big fans of. Guy like Conrad Hussey kind of being at the top of the list and just to touch on Clemson to give them some love in the secondary. Great the young Avian, unit. What'd you say? Great young unit right there. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to be true sophomores. Khalil Barnes playing the nickel, one of the better nickels in the country. Avian Terrell looks phenomenal as a true freshman. You look at guys, I mean, and then you talk about someone like Jaden Lucas, who I think is an extremely interesting prospect because he is good when he plays, just hasn't been healthy for his season, was a former top 50 national guy. I think there's a really good chance Clemson's a top 15 secondary in the country. I just you can't give him the edge over Florida State. That might be the best 
that'll close it out. I would love to hear this. This a lot of this might have been one of the best roster battles to do. A lot of really tightly contested ones. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown. Again, if you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.